Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and today we're going to be taking a look at two bottles coming to us from the Still Austin Whiskey Company. We have The Musician and their limited edition cask strength release. All right, so recently I have been on a craft whiskey binge, buying up all sorts of different and interesting bottles, and I decided that it's finally time to start featuring some of these distilleries and the products that they're making here on the channel. So to kick things off, I figured we would start with these two expressions from the Still Austin Whiskey Company. Like I said, this is The Musician, which is what they're calling their sort of standard Texas whiskey at 98.4 proof. And then over here, we have the recently released cask strength edition of The Musician, which is clocking in at 118 proof. Now, both of these are aged over two years, but if you know anything about Texas whiskey, you know that two years Texas time can be anywhere between like six to eight years anywhere else in the United States. Now, for this video, what I'm gonna be doing is kind of giving you some background information about Still Austin, telling you how I came to know this distillery, and then we're going to nose, taste, and evaluate both of these bottles. And I don't really think we need to do any comparisons or anything like that at the end. So I'm gonna to try to make this video as quick as I possibly can. Now, the first time that I came across Still Austin was actually through the Joe Rogan experience of all places. Now, I'm a big time Joe Rogan listener, as I'm sure many of you out there are as well. And as you know, he brings on a wide variety of guests ranging from comedians to politicians, scientists, and everybody in between. But I would say about 75% of the time, there is some sort of mind altering substance involved. And more often than not, that's, that's gonna be whiskey or bourbon. Now, when Joe had his studio out in California, he was drinking a lot of Buffalo Trace. They are sponsors of the podcast and everything like that. But when he moved to Austin, Austin, Texas, this new bottle popped up on the podcast that I didn't know anything about. And that actually ended up being this bottle, The Musician by Still Austin. Um, but I didn't really think anything of it at the time. Because Joe was drinking Buffalo Trace, I basically just figured he was another tater. And, uh, and when this bottle showed up, I thought maybe he's just showing a little bit of love to somebody who welcomed him to the city or something like that. What I didn't know is that Nancy Fraley is involved with Still Austin. And, and we're gonna get to that here in just a second and talk about why that's significant. But first, let's do a little bit of a rundown about what's going into these bottles here. So Still Austin uses a unique mash bill of Texas heirloom grains consisting of 70% white corn, as opposed to the industry standard number two yellow corn, 25% elven rye, and 5% wildfire malted barley. Now this is distilled in-house at their Austin, Texas distillery, proof down to 118 before entering the barrel. And then the barrels are stored in their farm country rick houses, which are exposed to the wild and sort of volatile central Texas climate. Now, because of this climate, the distillate in the barrels actually gets really far into the wood before returning to the center and repeating that process. And because of this, the barrel has a significant impact on the distillate. It's almost like sort of a, an accelerated aging process in some ways. And this is really why we see a lot of young Texas whiskeys hitting shelves because they don't drink their age. They drink well above their age from this immense barrel impact. But because the barrel does have this much impact, you run the risk of over-oaking your products or of just getting too much funkiness too soon. In order to combat that, Still Austin opts for a little bit of a lighter uh, char on their barrel. So they go with a number three char from Independent Stave Company. And again, this sort of helps to preserve some of the sweet and round flavors that they're looking for in their bourbon. I mentioned earlier a name that I'm gonna bring back up now, and that is Nancy Fraley. Many of you are gonna know Nancy Fraley from her work with Joseph Magnus, in particular with her blending of the cigar blend, which utilizes some Armagnac cask finishing with high-aged MGP bourbon. But Nancy is actually the master blender of Still Austin. And this is something that I had no idea about until I picked up this cask strength offering here. I figured out that uh, you know we were getting a cask strength version of Still Austin. It piqued my interest. I looked it up and I saw Nancy's name associated with it. And 
for those of you who know, anything that Nancy touches in the whiskey world pretty much turns to gold. So it's a sure buy on these two bottles. I'm very excited to check them out. She's even bringing over some of her um, ancient French techniques in brandy making in uh, blending and distillation to Still Austin with her sort of slow water reduction method where they add little bits of water to these barrels in the Rick houses every month. They proof them down slightly. And what this does is it kind of brings out different water and alcohol soluble extractives, um, essentially just bringing out different flavors at different proof points, just making for a better whiskey in the end. And this is a, a technique again that she brought over from her experience studying with some really, really amazing brandy makers um, over the course of her life. So anyways, still Austin, it's going to be a great thing. They've been open since 2017. Fairly new company, but with Nancy Fraley there, um, it's sure to be a great thing. Let's get to the tasting now. We're going to start off with this. It's the Musician. It's coming in at 98.4 proof, over two years old. Let's see what we get here on the nose. Ah, okay. It's a beautiful combination of sweet and spice. This thing does not smell two years old. This thing smells like a great bourbon right away. Yeah, sweet, spice, musty funkiness in here. I mean, Texas whiskeys have a particular kind of Texas funk. This almost has like a dusty funk that you would get in a bottle from like the 1980s, the 1990s. It's like that old school butterscotch note um, mixed in with this sort of dusty funk. It's awesome. And I can't believe it's coming from a two-year-old Texas whiskey. Yeah, you get some nice dark chocolate. You get some honey notes in here. You do get some corn grain, you know, it's a young whiskey. A little bit of orange zest. Yeah, some pepper. And a little bit of leather here as well. So you're getting a nice combination of light and dark notes all the way around, all sort of enveloped by this, yeah, this dusty funk that's going on. So let's check this thing out on the palate and see how it does. Cheers. All right. So my mouth is still watering. <laughs> that is an intense whiskey, especially for 98.4 proof. It really drinks over its proof in terms of just its presence on the palate. It's not necessarily like extremely spicy or anything like that. It's just that when it hits your palate, it grips you. You know, a lot of bourbons will, will suck all the moisture out of your palate and hit you with spice in the face. This is just like a heavy, dense, funky Texas whiskey. And when it hits your palate, it's like, I'm here, I'm taking over, you know, let's go for a ride now. That's what this thing is doing. I can't believe this is the standard bottling <laughs> that they produce. It, it's wildly good for what it is. So let's do another sip. Wow, yeah. The Texas funk kind of gives way to some nice dark honey notes. I'm getting a ton of dark chocolate and espresso on this. Nice little bitterness in there from those notes, but it's good. It's a good type of bitterness. I also get um, almost like a texture from this whiskey. And I don't mean minerality like George Dickel, like that has a particular kind of texture, but this just has a little bit of a, a granular texture on your palate. And it's something that really kind of differentiates it and keeps it interesting. I really like it. I get this on some other whiskeys as well, but this is done very, very well. I, I really, really like the mouthfeel and everything of this. It is a little thin in some ways, although it's heavy and, and dense, it's still a little thin. And I don't know if that makes so much sense. I might be crazy, but that's just kind of what I'm getting right now. All right, so as we get into the third sip here, this whiskey really starts to sweeten up. I mean, I'm still getting that sort of dusty funk going on the, the orange, the honey, the dark chocolate espresso, um, a good amount of spice, all that kind of stuff. But I'm now getting like this bubble gum or this cotton candy note. And you know what it's reminding me of is the Penelope Barrel Strength Batch 6, which I reviewed, I don't know, a month or two ago at this point. That is obviously a young MGP product, three and a half to four and a half years old. It's a blend of different mash builds, but you get a lot of similar notes here. It's almost like, it's almost like this still Austin is the Texas version, the brawnier, more intense version of a young MGP product. Um, I think it's better in a lot of ways. 
than the Penelope Barrel Strength Batch 6. I mean, they're kind of different beasts all the way around. The Penelope's a little brighter and more lively. This is pretty dark and intense, but it's like the Texas version of MGP, which is kind of hilarious. I, people might think I'm crazy for saying that, but I'm getting a lot of similar notes here. And remember, this is a high rye bourbon at 25% rye. Um, and, and so you're gonna get some of those MGP-like qualities coming from this, I think, because of that rye just naturally. But as we get into the finish here, um, I'm getting sort of a bitter sweet note. You get some of that dark chocolate and espresso that's a little bit bitter, but you have some honey sweetness lingering in the palate. And, uh, and overall, there's just a little bit of leather and some oak as well. So getting leather and oak from a two-year bourbon is craziness. I, I can't believe that still Austin can pull this off at two years old or two plus years old. It's surprising, it's awesome. And, uh, and at 40 bucks or so MSRP, it can really stand up to some of the big players on the market. So anyways, I'm impressed, that's awesome, but we really need to move on to the cask strength version of this. <laughs> if, the, uh, if the regular was this good, I can't wait to see what the cask strength has in store here. So let's go ahead and check this out. Remember, this is 118 proof, which is actually entry proof. Um, so this is, I guess, technically a foolproof whiskey too. Let's go ahead and see what we get on the nose here of this cast strength version. All right, so I told my patrons this the other day on Patreon and it's still the case here. This thing smells like a dusty Elijah Craig barrel proof. One of those old pirate bottles, the old labels, whatever you wanna call them. It has that dusty funk on here. And I know I said that the standard bottling also had it, it is so much more pronounced on the cask strength version here, that old school butterscotch note mixed with that dusty funk. It's got a little bit of that like dark cherry in here, some orange citrus. I can't believe that it smells that way. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just go back to the nose. Yeah, you get a really nice, again, dark chocolate espresso note, just like the other bottle here. But this one actually has, because of the proof, it has a brighter quality to it overall to sort of combat those darker notes as well. So I'm getting a lot of green apple here. I get a ton of pear. Um, there's a good little dose of ethanol. It is what it is. I mean, it's a young, high proof whiskey. A little bit of pepper, almost like almost like white pepper on this. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like it's got all these dark notes and it's got all these light notes but it also has this sort of overall outdoorsy quality to the light notes on this on this bourbon. So it's a great combination of things going on here. Bitter, sweet, bright. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> Let's go to the palate. <laughs> that is intense. Oh my gosh. It is so immensely spicy right away. I mean, this thing grips your palate and I said it's kind of heavy, this thing is just, it is so, so intense. All of this spice, it's very thick. It's it's drying, but also mouth-watering. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, I'm getting, again, that bittersweet type thing in here. This has a little more funky fruit going on, but I get a lot of that barrel char, I get a lot of that dark chocolate, that espresso, all those kind of notes going on. <sighs> It's just, it's just incredible. I'm gonna do one more sip here. All right, so I get thick butterscotch, dark cherry, citrus zest, tons of rye spice, tons of pepper. I mean, that is really, really predominant here. A good bit of ethanol. Yes, absolutely ethanol. And as we get into the finish, it's a hot finish. I mean, it's, it's not like, it's not a pleasant finish. It's kind of a challenging finish, a little bit abrasive on the palate. I might knock it for that just a little bit. And I think that's the youth kind of shining through here. Uh, but overall, I mean, if you want something that's really, really in your face, I know I called Sam Houston 15 brash on that review. No, this is brash. This is, this is bull in a China shop. Just punch you in the face, in the finish, on the palate, everything. But it has that dusty quality to it. It definitely shows its age. It shows its youth, I should say, but it is a damn good bourbon. I mean, both of these are. And if you're looking for something craft, if you're looking for something that's different, you want to expand your horizons, expand your portfolio, whatever you want to say, you, you've got to check out these Still Austin bottles. 
just amazing. I don't know. That's that's it. I mean, that's all I've got to say. Please don't overpay too much on secondary for either of these. I don't think this has any value on secondary, but this is going around 90 to 100. That's kind of a lot. I think it's usually around 60, 65. So, you know, if you can find it for that, that would be great. But that's all I've got for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification and turn on all notifications to find out when I'm dropping new content and when I'm going live, which is at least once a week. And if you enjoy what you're seeing from Drums and Drams and you wanna help support the channel and get access to some exclusive behind the scenes content, you can always check out the Patreon. The link is in the description below. We're building a great community over there um, just for you know like-minded whiskey drinkers to hang out, do some patron-only live streams and everything like that. But that's all I've got. I'm gonna go ahead and end with this uh, cask strength, <laughs> still Austin whiskey. So cheers, and I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.